I'm talking to all the women out there, and I'm talking to any man who has a mother, who has a sister, who has a wife, who you care about. You know what, we've all gone through stuff. We live in a world that's difficult. We live in a sinful world that throws all kinds of things our way, and it can be more common than we might realize that we're living with shame, we're living with doubt, we're living with self-condemnation. But Trisha Fissel, who has been there and has experienced the freedom, says it doesn't have to be that way. And I'm excited to have her with us in the TV44 studio today. As Trisha's gonna tell us the things that you've walked through in life and the freedom that is available through Christ. Yep, amen. So yep. why don't you just go ahead and start and share with us a little bit past in your life and how God has done. Okay, well, when I was five years old, um, I was introduced to Jesus and I accepted him as my savior. Um, and then I'd go to this little Baptist church by myself, you know, I'd get up in the morning and go, well, things happen, you know. And so um, from the time that I was five till about 10 years old, I was sexually molested by several different people. And then so at the age of 10, I started doing drugs. I started getting high, started huffing and just to escape the things that I that I was experiencing. I was filled with rage and anger. And then as I grew, you know, and became older as um, a teenager, like in school, I, I started experiencing with other different drugs and things. And then I started um, becoming sexually active, looking for love and looking for acceptance. And that's the only way that I found that I could, you know, receive that. But then it left a bigger hold in my heart. Um, so then fast forward till when I was 21 years old. During this time, my mom had become a Christian and started going to church and started praying for us, thankfully. And then when I was 21 years old, I had an encounter with mm. Jesus Christ that changed my life forever. Can you tell so. us about that encounter, what it was like? Yeah, when I went to my mom's house, I was dating someone at the time that had been pulled over. And I'm like, Mom, you need to pray for this person. Because I discovered that when my mom prayed for things, things happened. Mm -hmm. And so um, she said, okay, let's go pray right now. So we started praying. I'm like, while you're at it, pray for me. And that's all it took. I felt this liquid love that began to pour over my head. And it just started pouring from the top of my head down to my feet. And I started crying because it was the pure, sweetest love I had ever known. And I knew it was God. I knew it was Jesus. And I thought, God, everything that I've done, how can you still love me? And, and during that, it was like a 20-minute process. During that entire time, that's all I felt was love. And it was like when I was done, it felt like somebody gave me a shower from the inside out. And it's like the weight of the world was lifted off of me. And it was the happiest I'd ever been. And it was the highest high that I'd ever had. So things really hadn't changed in your life up to that point. But you knew that something, did you have a sense inside of you that something needed to change? Oh, you I needed God. You needed absolutely. something. Absolutely. Yeah, I knew I did. I hated myself. I knew what was right. I knew that Jesus came to die on a cross for me. And I knew that without him, you know, I would never make it to heaven because I, mean, I, I knew that as a little girl. And then, but, you know, you, I think you get to a point where you get so filled with condemnation and guilt and, and shame that mm -hmm. you don't think there's anybody that loves you. You know what I mean? And, and when I came into that encounter with that love, I thought, God, how can you still love me? There was no, he never condemned me. He saw everything. There was nothing hidden, yet he still loved me. We serve an incredible God. Yes, we does do. does that kind of thing. Yes, we do. So 21 years old, mm -hmm. you encounter this shower in, shower in Jesus, in yeah. a sense. Yeah. And how did you move forward after that situation? Well, I, I immediately broke up with my boyfriend at the time because I knew if I stayed there would be an opportunity for me to go back into that lifestyle and I didn't want it. Um, but it was kind of funny. I think God was setting me up because before that happened, my two best friends moved to Atlanta. Mm -hmm. I moved out in the country with my sister. I changed jobs. All my CDs got stolen out of my car. So it's, mm -hmm. it's like he almost stripped everything from my life to bring me to a place that I could say yes. I know that sounds kind of crazy, but I think that's kind of what happened. And then after that, that experience, you know, I started going to church with my mom and she's really the only friend that I had because all my other friends were still in the, into the party scene and stuff. And so God kind of isolated me, I guess, mm -hmm. in, in that sense. And honestly, as a young person, it was, it was a hard time to go through. It's like an, a year and a half process that I went through. But it was during that time that I really discovered who he was. Mm -hmm. And I began to understand his love for me and his, you know, what, what he's created me for and his purpose for my life. So you just mentioned you discovered who he was. Yeah. And then later on, you wrote the book, Discovering Who You Are. Yeah. 
Igniting the Passion by Trisha Fissel. First discovering who God is, Trisha experienced that in her life, and then she started discovering who she was, who you yeah. were in Christ. Yeah. And what changed? You were full of, you were, you were trying to fill the holes before yeah. with all of these other things. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, your life was different. Yes. I opened myself up. I discovered he was good. I discovered that there's no evil in him and, and everything that he has for my life was good. And so it would just became a process. You know, I, I would set time apart every single day and I would seek him and I would just ask him to show me who he was and open his word up to me. And then discovering him, I discovered who I was because the Bible says that as he is, so are we. And it was funny because it's been a journey. It's been a long journey, you know, still just discovering every single day. We'll never know the fullness of who he is, mm -hmm. you know. And so it's just a beautiful love relationship. And it, I, I found that it's not a religion. You know, so many people walk around in religion. And I thought for the longest time that that's what Christianity was. Even as a young Christian, I still struggled with, you know, thinking I had to pray so much or, you know, I was excited if I prayed 15 minutes a day, you know, and then days that I wouldn't, I would literally get mad at myself and bang my head against the wall and say, God, why am I so stupid? Why can't I do this? Because I thought for the longest time I had to perform and I had to live a certain way to please him or to get him to accept me and to love me. You know, throughout school, I would try to get good grades. As a younger child, I'd play sports and try to excel in them just to get the love and the approval. Well, during this relationship and this journey with the Lord, I found that I didn't have to earn his approval. It was, it's nothing we can mm -hmm. earn, right? It's that the Bible says that we love him because he first loved us. And it was just discovering that love and then him just tearing down ideas and thought processes and, and views of the way I saw myself. You know, a few years ago, I, was in, I, go to, I travel for work and I was in China and I was praying one day, I'm like, God, why do you love me? You know, okay, what do I do? I don't have any talents. You know, what, what makes you love me? And he said, Tricia, you know, I have some little nieces and I love them to pieces. And they don't do anything to deserve that love. It's just, I just love them for who they are. Mm. And I said, but God, how can you love me? And I would even tell people, look what God can do with a piece of trash. Mm. And he told me, he said, you were never trash. Mm. And he took me to Matthew where it says that a man found a treasure and it was buried in the earth. And he went and he sold everything and he bought the ground to buy that treasure. And he said, that's what you are. You're the treasure. Mm. He said, but you've identified yourself with all the dirt that was thrown on top of you. And so many of us, we identify ourselves with the things that have happened to us, with people's opinions, with the things that the, you know, the condemnation and the guilt and the lies of the enemy, but that's not who we are at all. So and, what kind of a message, which you just started to, to say actually, do you wanna share with other women? Because you have reasons to feel shame. I have reason to feel shame. We all have experienced things, yeah. but yet that's not where God wants us to be. No. And, um, and the freedom that you've experienced, I bet you would love to see other women experiencing the same freedom Oh, Christ. absolutely, absolutely. I think the biggest thing is just really discovering that we are truly new creations in Christ. And we've been translated out of darkness into light. And so everything from darkness, condemnation, shame, self-hate, all of those things, those are no longer part of our identity. It's not who God's created us to be. And so we have to begin to separate ourselves from those things and tear down strongholds in the way that we think and the way that we see ourselves and start seeing ourselves the way that God sees us. And when we start to do that, we start to live differently. Mm -hmm. We start to, to think and act differently and it changes who we are. We begin to see the value in us. You know, God loved us so much that Jesus died on a cross mm -hmm. for us. And the value of something is what something's, you know, somebody's worth paying for. Mm -hmm. And so when we think about that, not all the money in the world could redeem us mm -hmm. or purchase us, but it was his blood. And so that's pretty valuable, you know, and, and we, have to, we have to receive that value for ourselves personally, because that's how God sees us and the yeah. value he's placed upon us. Well, that message plus a whole lot more you're bringing yeah. to St. Mary's High School Auditorium, April 13th, the Back to Life Women's Conference is coming yes. up. What makes you excited about this event? Um, we're, we're praying and fasting, and I'm believing that, you know, when we come into salvation, when we're born again, so many of us still wear our grave clothes. And when we look at when Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead, he came to life, but he was still bound. And he, he commanded that the grave clothes be loosed and mm -hmm. taken from him. 
And so many women, even Christians, they struggle because they're still in their grave clothes. Mm. And I believe that God wants to encounter his daughters. Mm. I believe that God wants to, to bring them into a greater place of living. Mm. You know, so many people just are in existence. God has a, mm. a greater place of living for us. And all we have to do is step into it. We have to recognize it and step into it. Trisha Fischel, thank you so much for sharing that. Yeah, thank you. We want to close by encouraging you to get out of your grave clothes and be ready to step into a better place of living where God has intended for you. It's the Back to Life Women's Conference taking place April 13th at St. Mary's High School Auditorium. Listen to this. It's a free event. Lunch is provided ages 15 on up. Just email that email address right there info at trisha .com, or you can call us at tv44 if you have questions and information is also on our events page on our website the back to life women's conference april 13th with trisha fissel i encourage you to attend